Lucky star. So here's some, some examples of uh, G-Star radios. Um, my brother has this one. This is uh, the ID-5100. This is various colors of uh, the ID-51. Um, this is uh, an ID-7100, which is um, a uh, low band radio. So there, there's a limited amount of D-Star that's used on the low bands. Um, and this is uh, Kenwood uh, THD74. Kenwood makes uh, um, a D Star radio as well. Uh, this is a block diagram. Uh, it's not very clear, but uh, this shows the microphone coming into an analog to digital converter that takes your voice and, and changes it into uh, data. This block here is. <coughs> Uh, one of the things that separates the uh, D-Star DMR and System Fusion is the, it, it's the AMVE encoder or the vocoder. And that takes uh, a serial data stream from, of, of, of your voice and um, changes it to either D-Star or DMR or uh, System Fusion. Um, this is an example of a vocoder chip. This is a USB device that goes into a computer. And uh, uh, this allows you to uh, talk on, not through the radio, but directly through the net to any of those protocols. They, they, <coughs> I, it's probably incorrect to say that they all use the same chip. But there is a chip, the, the Ambi 3000 vocoder, which will do all three protocols. And th this is made by uh, Northwest Digital. And it allows you to talk on the network separate from the radio. You can get into the reflectors and what have you. And then, um, so after the, the vocoder section, there's a block diagram which uh, does the actual uh, encoding for DSTAR. And this takes the, the connection information in uh, and adds it to the data stream. And then there is a GMSK uh, modem that drives the radio. And it's my understanding that um, all three of these radios are the same, <coughs> except for the fact that the, the vocoder is different. And the connection method, in other words, how you talk to people in, in the, in the D-Star case, this would be uh, something called my call, your call, and, and what have you. And in the DMR case, it would be things like um, color code and time slot. And um, for YSF would be whatever YSF ha has. And that, that all of these are very similar except for the differences in those two areas. Asus integrated the uh, AMBI into their DSP chip. Um, so that's a radio block diagram. And um, the, uh, uh, the company that makes the vocoder, and it's done in hardware, is DVSI. And um, it's, this point is argued but uh, it's, it's, it's basically a public, published standard. So the vocoder isn't proprietary, but it is, uh, does seem to be sole sourced. So um, this is a representation of uh, the D-Star signal bandwidth. Uh, the, the spec was written and it was designed to be narrow band. And, and their goal was to put more conversations in a particular uh, a bandwidth. And this is a comparison uh, between a regular, the width of a regular FM signal and uh, the D-star uh, signal. And you do lose fidelity. We're going we're to listen to a D-star signal, and you'll know what I'm talking about when, when I say that the fidelity is, is uh, not there. Yeah. Who has to leave at, at noon? Anybody that, that just want to leave? Okay. 
Are you interested in, in the fusion presentation? I am. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just concerned that we're going to run out of time for the, for the fusion and, and rush through it if people want to hear about the... Uh, so leave me, you know... I'll, be, I'll be quick. Ten, ten minutes or so. Now, I did think about that, but about four years ago, I made a major blunder. Uh, I made some energy efficiency improvements to my house, uh, which included putting down R40 insulation in the attic. But then I opted for the, uh, uh, the uh, solar reflector barrier, which is kind of like a film that they mount So that's what D-Star sounds like. I don't know if you picked up on that, but it's, it sounds a little, little, uh, I keep wanting to say, uh, narrow, you know, single it, side bandage. It didn't sound as robotic as the DMR did. It has better fidelity. <clears throat> um, there's another thing that happens a lot is, uh, let's see, I probably have to get back into the play. There's a thing that uh, D-Star does, and they call it R2-D2, <laughs> where things will get a little out of sync. There's little gaps in there. Um, sometimes the whole. Um, Actually, it sounds more like Klingon. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> uh, sometimes the whole transmission will sound like that. R2 D2. I want to mention that DMR is more robust than fusion is more robust for that with their forward error correction. So uh, you don't get that R2 D2 with fusion. It's usually either there or or not. There's a couple of good demos on YouTube on fusion versus the yep. other modes. And you can, you can clearly <coughs> tell the difference. Yep. I don't know what I've done here. Um, Upper left there, is that the slideshow? Yeah, let's cut off. Scott, come up and help me drive this, if you would. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> oh, that, that's what I want. I did it. Yeah, good, <laughs> job. good job. Good job. Make it so. <laughs> so, okay, so the difference uh, in between uh, D, uh, DMR and D-Star. D-Star, you actually talk over a connection. So you connect something, and then you, you, uh, uh, you, you do the talking over the connection. There's all kinds of routing methods. In other words, the original mechanism was call sign routing where um, I would transmit uh, Steve's call sign and it would go find where he was and connect to that place. So, for example, Steve could get on uh, an airplane in Rochester and then we were talking before uh, as he was driving to the airport. And then he would get off the airplane in Los Angeles and he would talk on a D-Star machine and um, when... I called his call sign. In other words, they're, they're, you put the actual call sign in the field when you connect. 
it would go to the server and find the repeater that he last transmitted on and connect to that repeater so we could continue our conversation. But um, he has to talk to a repeater to have that happen? Yeah. All right. Or a hotspot. Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and many, you know, this has been going on for almost 20 years, so this has been rewritten and added to uh, many times, so there are all of these mechanisms to um, route call signs and find people. So the newest one uh, that's been in use for about a year is called CCS7. Uh, and they started that um, uh, with, a, I think it was four digits, and you could actually uh, key those digits on a touchtone pad, and it would go to the server and find out where somebody was and then call them at that location. And they quickly ran out of numbers. <coughs> so last year that was redesigned. And somebody says, well, why don't we just use DMR IDs? Because they're seven digits and, and, and they use those numbers. So CCS7 is based upon um, uh, that, um, that scheme. And that's the one that I use mostly because uh, that's how I find my brother. My brother is now out with, uh, in, uh, in Alaska in a motorhome, so I just call him using his uh, DMR ID and it will find where he is. Most of the time he's in his motorhome on his hotspot, but in Anchorage he was on a repeater and I would find him there. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about routing, but what I'm saying, just wanted to make the point is uh, DSTAR is connection-based uh, rather than using the parameters that are transmitted every time. So you connect to a station, you talk to the station, and then you unlink uh, either by connecting to a new station. You have or to register your call sign in order to use DSTAR yeah. first. Um, with the newer mechanisms, you do not have to register. I mean, that, that was the original call sign routing, and they, they certainly want you to. But um, uh, the, I think you only have to register your call sign with the CCS7 ID. Um, and, and these are all of the ways that you can connect on DSTAR. Um, this is really uh, uh, too busy to, to really see, but you can talk point to point. You can talk through repeaters. You can talk by linking one repeater to the next repeater. Um, you can uh, talk through a reflector. Uh, you can, and there are various types of reflectors. So what most of my operation is, um, as I said, you know, I, I talk to people weekly, but I talk to my brother every day. And uh, I have uh, stored in my memory his DMR number, I call him, it links to whatever he was last connected to, uh, which is usually his hotspot, but it, but it may be Reflector 9 Charlie, and then we just carry on a conversation. And, and that's, that's worked very well uh, for me. Uh, some of the other things that are shown here that um, I, don't, I don't think are done so much anymore is that D-Star uh, is sold by ICOM for two meters, uh, it's, it's sold um, uh, for 70 centimeters. Other people are making equipment to use it on two, 220 megahertz or, or one and three quarter meters. But the, it also runs uh, at 128 kilobits per second up around a gigahertz. And they're showing uh, sending video data. Uh, and and that's, that's certainly possible, but um, it's not done a lot. Uh, the other thing that it's shown here is that GPS is integrated into the, into the ID 51 and 5100 and it sends the, the position of your radio to uh, the server and then that's disseminated on APRS.FI. Uh, this is a picture of a D-Star repeater. This is the repeater that is KB2VZS uh, up at Baker Hill. Uh, the, these are some of the D-Star repeater locations. Uh, this is KB2VZS. Um, this is the Hemlock machine. Uh, and 
There's one in Corning. Uh, this is SOTUS. I don't know, it, does, it, does Xerox have an internet link? They, they do have an internet link through a, a hotspot at the uh, college. Okay. The college, yeah. I wonder why they don't show up on the Mac. Probably not working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, he's been having some issues okay. getting it uh, working. Uh, reflectors are things that are in a, a data center. So, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's an, it, there's no radio in a reflector, it's just an internet connection that you can connect to and it will tie repeaters together or <coughs> hotspots together. Uh, when I was coming back from breakfast, we went to the, uh, the, the, the Lumberjack breakfast out in Macedon today and I was listening to KB2VZS. Somebody had connected that to <coughs> reflector one Charlie and that used to, that's historically the, one of the London reflectors. That, that's probably the, the, the second biggest reflector in, in, the, in the world. And there was a special event station in Philadelphia on the London reflector um, and, and was working people in, in uh, England and, and Scotland. And uh, reflector one, uh, two years ago, was moved to the cloud. So it's not even a... a real machine anymore. It's just something that ru that's running on uh, Amazon Web Services. Um, the best way to find DSTAR hotspots is to start with the APRS.FI screen. Um, so uh, this is not as clear as it was when I uh, was dreaming it was going to be clear, but uh, all of these black dots are probably hotspots. Uh, you know, mine is listed on there. RIT is listed on there. <coughs> and you can move your mouse over and, and click on uh, what that service is at APRS.FI and it will give you the frequency and uh, the call sign and, and what have you. Um, there, there's one on a dorm at RIT, uh, uh, my house, and there are several others that you'll see around town. Uh, in addition to the hotspots, there are dongles. And this is a dongle. Uh, there's another device called a DB dongle, and this is a, vo a vocoder, which in hardware does the voice translation, both directions, and then the software that goes with it um, does the connection and provides the, the ability, you know, for DSTAR, it's like uh, my call, your call, uh, and all the other program parameters for connection. And for DMR, it does the, I don't think it does time slot. I don't think that is appropriate, but it, you know, it does the color code and all that kind of stuff. And you can actually talk to, not necessarily the repeaters, some repeaters you can talk to using the software, but definitely the reflectors. And this is done on a computer without uh, the internet. Um, just some pictures of the hotspot. This is the a uh, hot, hot spot that Steve has, the zoom spot uh, that I have, and there are many types as Steve has shown you. This is the RIT. This is on one of the dorms at RIT, and this is the hot spot in the rack. It's a GE Phoenix radio, and uh, there's a Raspberry Pi there connected to the internet, and um, uh, it, it, it uses the DVR PTR modem, which is D-Star only. Well, we're, we're, we are going to replace that with a, a I gave it to them. Hopefully, they're going to put it up for the multi-protocol um, hotspot. Uh, these are connections that are made in the radio. In the radio, for every channel that you're going to talk to, you're going to have uh, something called uh, your call, and there's repeater one and repeater two that have to be uh, programmed in there to make a connection. So, for example, if... Um, in my radio, my call would be uh, KC2NF, right? Uh, but, but I also, in my DSTAR program, I have four other call signs because I share that program with my brother. <coughs> uh, and so uh, there's another field that you program in, and that is going to be the module that you'll connect to. So, for example, if I'm going to connect through, if I'm going to talk through uh, KB2VZS, I'll set repeater one to KB2VZS, if, and if I'm also going out over the net, I have repeater two call sign, which is KB2VZS underscore G. So those are two modules in that repeater, KB2VZSB 
KV2 VZSG. And then there's a field called your call, and that's the place that I want to talk to. So, for example, if, if I was going to call somebody in Canon Degla, the way I would do it is I would, in my program, have uh, repeater one set to KC, KV2 VZSB and a gateway KB, K, uh, KB, uh, I forgot, what, what was I talking about? <laughs> KV2 VZSG. And then in your call, it would be um, uh, K2BWKB. And then when I uh, talked on that connection, my voice would come out of the, the Canon Dago repeater, and I'd be connected. And then uh, when, I, when I actually talk, I change the your call from uh, K2BWKB to CQ, 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 and, and that's, that's what I use to talk. And then to disconnect, um, I put a U uh, in the your call field to <coughs> disconnect. Um, yeah. Okay, here's some examples. This, this is what I would set the uh, radio memories to to make this call. This would be a call to connect me to Reflector 9, this would be what I would use during my conversation, and this would be how I would disconnect. Uh, this is me calling, who am I calling? Uh, you know, this is a CCS7 ID, and then I would switch to CQ, CQ, and then disconnect. And this is the example that I gave for my hotspot. These are the call signs of my hotspot, and this is me connecting to the Canandaigua a 440 machine, and then I would talk to somebody and then disconnect. Uh, so it's all connection based. Uh, this is uh, this is not clear enough to see, but um, what I intend to show is that um, this is one way of programming the radio, where I have all the call signs in memory and I switch between them. But the newer way of doing it. Uh, is a mechanism called a, a DR mode where um, you separate the place you're calling from uh, how you're calling. So this is what I would select in DR mode, my base station hotspot, my mobile hotspot, my RIT hotspot, and, um, and so, so I would select one of those and then one of the destinations that I would want to talk to. So. What I would do is like make the connection to uh, uh, Reflector 1 Charlie uh, by calling this, and then I would go back to CQ, CQ for <coughs> conversation. And, and then the U would be the disconnect, and I uh, is information, and E is an echo server. Um, and all of these other things, these other destinations, this is just the ones that I programmed, because they're, they're what I want to talk to. But all these other sources come from the factory and the radio. And they're also online for you to update. That CCS ID is Freddy WB2DFC. Okay, so if I, if I called that number from my hotspot, likely he would be on uh, the SOTUS repeater. That's where I talked to him. Okay, I'm lost here. My presentation has gone awry again. Oh, because I'm done. Okay. You need the end slide. Finito. You need you. Yeah, three minutes. Can you can you bring up the fusion one? Yeah. I do a demo. We, we do not have to be out of this building at 12. Oh, okay. okay. But people that, because I I'd advertise it from 10 to from uh, 10 to 12, you have to leave right. time, but we can stay later. Start out with a demo. Leo, we want to do a demo. Okay. Set to a simple like that. Set to, all right. FD70 wants to. Just throw it out there and see if something happens. <laughs> <laughs> All you have to do is listen and, and push Is that the raffle prize?
Fusion is programmed just like you would program your, your analog. Uh, so I quickly set it up on the front panel to do uh, simplex. Press the top. This is kit A1C. This one right above the power key. It says B O L on it. Okay. Okay. See, and then K1 CNF testing. Hear me? K1 CNF testing. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes? One more volume? Yeah. I've got both all the way now. Okay. That's FM. K1 CNF testing. One, two, three, four. Okay, that's FM. And I'm going to switch it to uh, digital on this radio, and your radio will automatically switch it to the digital mode. Three different, did you hear the three different modes? Um, you have digital narrow, which uses 6.25 kilohertz of the, of the band for the voice, and then the other 6.25 for digital information. And then the digital Y, best voice quality, uses the whole 12.5 kilohertz. That's okay. cool, and, and, and it's automatic. Just, it's, it's automatic. That's what Yesu built into it. They call AMS, Automatic Mode Select. So the repeaters, if they're in AMS mode, you can transmit digital or, or FM. And you can also set it up so it goes in FM and out digital, or in digital and out FM. At the repeater. At the repeater. Or you can set your radios to do the same thing as well. Now, is it just Yesu that has that? Or is that Yesu, unfortunately, is the only manufacturer. And, uh, but it, is, it is open, isn't it? No, they're well. The the standard C4 FM is the you know which P25 mm -hmm. uses. So Yesu took that C4 FM, the digital, and tweaked it a little bit. It's it's developed by hands, hams for hams. They tweaked it to get the best voice quality out of it, as well as as do the forward error correction and some other modes text messaging, sending pictures, things like that that they wanted to eventually do, which they are doing now. Are there fusion repeaters in this region? Yes. Xerox, Xerox Club has two. Um, the Drumlins Club has, has three. Um, there's one up in Baker Hill, 449.8, um, I believe. Yeah, there's a number of them, and you can go through the... Uh, uh, well, I mean, do you want to do this? Or you want me to click for you? Well, if you can click, I'll click. I'll talk because I haven't used the Mac in a while. Yeah. 2013, and the two modes, uh, digital narrow will give you both uh, voice and data. Because in that mode, what it transmits, if you have a, a GPS uh, on in your radio, you'll see the call sign of the person that you're talking to, and how many miles away they are. And then when you talk, he'll see your call sign and how many miles away you are. That's automatic. I mentioned amateur friendly. Oh, Let's see what sorry. else is on Is that there. how far are you used from the repeater or from? No, it transmits through the repeater. Okay. So it's, it's how far you are in a direct line of sight between your location and his location. So I can go through a hotspot, I can go through a repeater, or I can go through something called a, a simplex node and... It's part of the packet of information in the digital transmission. So you're getting the GPS to GPS position. Mm -hmm. um, they, they optimized it. Um, to summarize, the, the DMR is 6.25 kilohertz. And Mike just showed the, uh, the D-star. Uh, a big point here is no registration required. You don't have to 
go to uh, a DMR site, a DSTAR site uh, uh, to register. You just program. When you get the radio, it comes uh, unprogrammed. You, you, from the front panel, you can punch in your call sign. Boom, you're done. So every time you transmit on digital now, it'll transmit your, your call sign. So you can also do a lot of stuff uh, over the Internet as well. If you, if you just want to talk simplex, you can do that. If you want to talk through repeater, um, you can do that as well. There's no color codes or, or anything like that. It'll just, the repeater, if set up an AMS, it'll recognize what the signal is. Okay. And they have a, um, a line of, of radios. Um, the one that you were using is this FT70D. That's their entry level. That's their cheapest. Uh, it's about $199. i have seen some specials that go down to about $189, $179 or something. But that's the cheapest uh, fusion radio. I mean, it, you're going to pay about twice for a fusion radio than what you're going to pay for a handheld uh, DMR radio. Um, in handhelds, this is the top of the line here, which is the one that I was using there. Um, they have a touchscreen color mobile. They have a HF and 6 meter and 2 meter and 440 radio. Um, they have another lower cost. This is uh, $300 for the uh, 100. And they just introduced an entry, entry level mobile. This is about 260 or so, uh, dual band UHF, VHF. And then they have separate radios for VHF and UHF. And this one is on sale. These, both of these are on sale for 144 at uh, Ham Radio Outlet until the end of September. Next. And I'll just quickly go over this. This just compares. The slides will be available, I guess. It, it shows that the transmission rate, they took advantage of the whole uh, 9600 there as well. And these are the, the four modes. We demonstrated the uh, digital narrow. Uh, we demonstrated the, the, the voice wide. There's a uh, uh, digital wide as well if you want to send data or pictures. I have a, uh, uh, a speaker mic that has a camera in it. You click a button on the mic, you, you push send, and you send out that, uh, that picture, color or black and white, to anybody that's listening on that frequency that has a fusion radio that is capable of receiving uh, a picture or, or data. Be something great for the uh, Aries Races or Ecom or yeah. even special events, but I don't see a lot of people using it. We've, we've, I've been on nets where we transfer pictures back and forth, but but that's all. And of course the uh, the FM. Okay. So what do you basically transmit the picture? It goes into a, what an SD card or something on the radio? Yeah, the the radio has to have an SD card in order to receive the pictures. Uh, this has a touch screen, but it's black and white. It has an SD card. The picture will come out on but that. Does the, yeah, but it, is that but the 70? Or is that the higher end? Uh, this is the FT2D. The 2D. The, the higher end. Yeah. The 100 and the 400 right. both have SD right. cards, and you can get... It's nice in the 400 because it's got the color screen, and you can see the color picture. Yeah, they were making a point on a YouTube video that I, I saw that the uh, 7250, which is the new one, is nice. It's only 260 bucks at HRO, but for 30 bucks more, 40 bucks more, the FTM 100 gives you a hell of a lot more yes. uh, capability, right. including the SD card, which is well, really, it, it, really including cool. the, the GPS, so you can do APRS if yeah. you want to, or distance. And the front panel separates on the 100, so right. you can remotely mount it. It doesn't do that on the on the other. With the SD card. Uh, Ability on those radios. Can you store uh, uh, a backup of your frequencies and stuff that you programmed in? Yes. <coughs> yes. I have everything really cool. will back up to the SD card. And to program the radio, I can take the SD card over to my computer, yeah. uh, download, make changes, bring it over to the radio, and, and, and yeah, upload it. Go. Right there. Or make changes on the radio, yeah. save it to the SD card, bring it over to the computer program, and make changes. Um, let's see, going through this, yeah, okay, hotspots. There's something called group monitoring um, on, on the radios. And, and what that is, it allows you to see who else is out there. You can press a, a, a button, GM, and it transmits like every 30 seconds a little packet burst of information. 
And on your radio screen, it will show you who else has a fusion radio in GM mode and where they are and what their signal strength is in the area. So if you can see them on your screen, it will tell you, okay, I can do it the simplex. This is basically used for simplex. They don't, you can do it through a repeater, but everybody is sending out a quick burst of, of information like every 30 seconds, and that just drives the repeater owners crazy to, to do that kind of thing. Uh, text messaging, uh, I leave one of my uh, 100 radios on all the time, and, and it fills up with text messages that, that hams send to each other. You know, hey, Bill, uh, you know, get on the radio in 30 minutes. You know, this is a guy in California, and, and let's have a QSO. You know, that kind of thing pops up on the, uh, on the screen. There's nothing that I have to do. I just leave the radio set up on, on, that, on that frequency, and it comes through. I mentioned sending pictures with the camera mic, and we had a demonstration of the automatic uh, mode select, recognizing what the signal is, which type of digital signal, and whether it's digital or analog. Um, they have the, the radios that you saw, but they have the repeaters as well. This is the uh, this is a factory re ref refurbished repeater. I happened to buy one of these in January when they were available because the price was four hundred dollars. How could I not, you know, buy a whole repeater for four hundred dollars? And I got one a, a backyard repeater set up with with this. And their their new one here, which has uh, um, it'll allow remote receive. It'll do VHF and UHF at the same time. And you can plug in the, an IMS card that will let you do um, IP packets, either over the, the regular internet or over a private uh, internet as well. And I believe they're having a special without the IMS card for this six or $800 uh, till the end of the year, I think. Um, all the repeaters that I'm aware of in the area are the, uh, the VR1X. I don't know of anybody that's, that's bought the, the Xerox Club and Drumlins is thinking about there's a trade-in program for this repeater to get this, and it's very cheap, but so far, I don't know of anybody that's done that. Oh, the back up there, there's a uh, VOIP. This is the box uh, to do VOIP. I have a note, I have two years I've had a node station set up with this box. It's simplex, it's on a frequency, allows anybody with a fusion radio to transmit on that frequency, this box is connected to a computer, and this connects then to the to the internet. So they can get on a, a, a reflector or into uh, what's called a wires X room. And rooms can be connected. You know, there's rooms all over the, over the world. I have mine connected uh, full time to the, something called the Midwiz room. Um, there's experts out there. There's a lot of traffic out there. So if you just listen in on that frequency, you can hear a lot of people talking. Uh, and they have a net Monday nights at, at 8.30. If you have a question about uh, fusion or your radio, um, check into the net, ask the question, and more than likely, whatever it is, however technical it is, you'll get an answer because there's a fusion support person that runs the Minnesota-Wisconsin network of fusion repeaters. He's trained by, by Yesu. His name is Chris, K-E, K-9-E-Q. And, and to get into the, I demonstrated the automatic mode. You can do a, a manual mode too. There's a button on this radio. It's located here. On this radio, located here. And over in this radio, located here. It's called mode. Or uh, DX. Hit that once real quick. You'll be in FM. Hit it again. You'll be in digital narrow. Hit it again. You'll be in digital wide. Those are dual band radios. Um, yes, all those are, are dual band Simultaneous radio. receive on both, or? Um, this one, this, this mobile radio, the 400 and the, the 2DR, <coughs> yes, okay, they are. Um, this one here has only one receiver, but they have something called dual watch, where we'll switch back and forth between them, okay? This one will do cross-band repeat. This will do cross-band repeat, um, FM only, not digital. Uh, because in this one, there is only one vocoder. So you can't do, you need two vocoders. This one, I, I've set it to the top to be, you know, digital, and the bottom to be digital, and they're both coming in at the same time. It's hard to understand them, 
but this will do both because it has two vocoders in it. The two single band radios, the 3200 and the mm -hmm. 207, are the same as the 7258. They only do one at a time. No, they right. only do one. Right. You can't yeah. listen to two. Right. The dual band one, you can set it up into, into uh -huh. dual watch mode. Right. You, you can change the time. I have mine every five seconds. It goes to uh, the, uh, the other uh, BFO and quickly switches between them. Frequencies. It's Yesu has the wide. You know, none of these the DMR radios don't have. You know, they're they're either 70 centimeters. Um, majority of them. What's now? There's you're starting to see dual band DMR radios out, but they're pretty much tied to the ham frequencies. Maybe a little bit more. Yesu has a wide. You know, from I don't know 108 to. 800 some odd megahertz, and it'll have the, you know you pick up the airport AM frequencies as well. So on this one, they sometimes go to VFOB, you know, and, and listen in on 220 repeaters or some of the uh, FSR or whatever. You can't transmit on those those frequencies, but you can listen in. So I understand that this radio, is, if I'm out of area and there's no DMR or no fusion repeaters, I can still get into a conventional repeater using their FM. With their FM, yeah. So it, yeah. Or bring along a, a hotspot, and you can use it just like you can with, with DMR or D-Star, and, and get into the fusion uh, reflector network for the fusion wires X. They're separate, but now they have crossovers between them. So you can go on a reflector that's connected to a wires X no, Wires X is Yesu. The server's located in Japan. There's thousands of rooms all over the world, and you can get into any one of those. So they're starting to be more inter interconnected. Does the Pi Star hotspot work with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's okay. yeah, <coughs> yeah. That's what I have set up there. Somebody asked about the fusion repeaters information. Uh, this is from uh, from repeater book and website there, so you can see all these. Uh, <laughs> and again, I don't know why, but Rochester was kind of late, you know, with even with, with fusion, you know, there are not many DMR, but if you go other places, Syracuse had a, several fusion repeaters for uh, oh, really? a long time now, and they've got one set up on, you know, you can go in on VHF, FM, and come out on UHF <laughs> digital, or vice versa. It's kind of neat. Next. Okay, talked about repeaters, yeah, reflectors, same thing, computer servers. Um, anyone, they've now set it up so that anyone, they have a YSF, Yesu Fusion, you know, re reflector. You, on a Raspberry Pi, you can host your own reflector. But the problem with that now is that there's hundreds of reflectors on there with nobody on them. There's a few that are busy all the time, like Alabama and, and Minwiz. So you have the, the YSF, which is on your, you can, it on your hotspot, the, the FCS network. This was originally on the DB4 Mini. Um, there's one, two, three, four, you know, FCS 01, 02, and each one of those has from, I think, 0 to